Roman engineering was full of inventiveness and innovation. The Romans used concrete, one of their greatest construction feats. Roman concrete's strength and endurance defied scientists and builders for decades. Modern technology has revealed how the Romans created this extraordinary substance. Join us as we delve into the fascinating history and properties of Roman concrete and discover how we finally figured it out, how it's made and why it has amazing properties. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Roman concrete, called Apis Cementicium, was used to build things. Roman concrete was water-hardened cement. Pozzolanic ash prevents cracks, making it robust. Lime clasts fixed concrete cracks, according to MIT research. By the mid-first century, the material was widely used. Diverse aggregate types permitted different ways to organize the materials, although it was usually covered in brick. The Pantheon Dome, the world's biggest unreinforced concrete dome, was created during the Concrete Revolution. Roman concrete was usually covered on the outside with stone or brick, and the inside could be decorated with stucco, fresco paintings, or thin slabs of marble in different colors. It is very different from modern concrete because it is made of rocks and a two-part cement system. Most of the time, the aggregates were much bigger than in modern concrete. They were often as big as rubble, so the concrete was usually laid down instead of poured. Some Roman concrete could be set underwater, which was helpful when building bridges and other things near water. It's unclear when Roman concrete was first made, but it was used all over the place by about 150 BC. Some experts think it was made a century before that. In his 10 books on architecture, which he wrote around 25 BC, Vitruvius described the different types of aggregate that should be used to make lime mortars. He suggested Pozzolana, the brownish-yellow-gray volcanic sand from the Pozzuoli beds near Naples, and the reddish-brown volcanic sand from the beds near Rome. Vitruvius says that the ratio of lime to Pozzolana for building cement should be one part lime to three parts Pozzolana, and the ratio of lime to Pozzolana for underwater work should be one part lime to two parts Pozzolana. This is almost the same ratio used today to make concrete for marine locations. By the middle of the first century AD, Roman builders knew a lot about how to build underwater with concrete. Caesarea was the first place we know of that used Roman concrete technology underwater on such a large scale. Nero's new building rules mostly called for brick-faced concrete to be used to rebuild Rome after a fire in 64 AD destroyed much of the city. This has helped the brick and concrete industries to grow. Roman concrete, like all concrete, is made of gravel and hydraulic mortar, a binder mixed with water that hardens. The aggregate was made up of rock, ceramic tile, lime clasts, and demolished building rubble. Binders included quicklime and gypsum, pozzolana or pit sand. Volcanic dust was preferred when available. Pozzolana makes concrete salt resistant. Alumina and silica dominated pozzolanic mortar. Tough aggregate was common. Lime clasts, formerly thought to indicate poor aggregation technique, react with water seeping through fissures and give reactive calcium to form new crystals and heal the cracks, according to 2023 research. The strength of these lime clasts came from a hot mixing process with quicklime rather than slaked lime. Concrete, especially the hydraulic mortar that held it together, was a structural ceramic whose paste state rheological plasticity made it useful. Hydration and chemical and physical interaction cause hydraulic cement to set and harden. Slaked lime mortars, pre-Roman cement, were set differently. Roman concrete had limited plasticity after setting, but it was tensile resistant. Pozzolanic cements set like Portland cement. Roman Pozzolana cement contains a high silica content like modern cement with blast furnace slag, fly ash or silica fume. Seawater reacts with volcanic ash and quicklime to form a rare crystal called topamrite, which may resist splitting, giving Roman marine concrete strength and durability. Seawater percolating through tiny cracks in Roman concrete reacted with philipsite and volcanic rock to form aluminous topamrite crystals. The most durable building material in human history is the consequence. Saltwater deteriorates modern concrete within decades. Another potassium-rich Roman concrete at the tomb of Cassilia Metella reinforced interfacial zones and potentially contributed to greater mechanical performance. Since 1860, Portland cement compressive strength has increased almost tenfold to 50 MPa, 7,300 psi. Ancient mortars have little mechanical data, but Roman concrete dome breaking may indicate tensile strength. 
Tensile strengths vary greatly from the initial mix's water-slash-cement ratio. The Romans' water-slash-cement ratios and their impact on Pazolanic cement strengths are unknown. Interruptions and internal structures within walls and domes caused concrete mass discontinuities in the earthquake-prone Italian peninsula. To accommodate earth movement, parts of the building could shift slightly, strengthening the framework. This made bricks and concrete bendable. This may explain why many buildings survived severe cracking for various reasons. Gradation in domes also strengthened concrete. The Pantheon's upper dome aggregate alternates layers of light tuff and pumice, giving the concrete a density of 1,350 kg per cubic meter, 84 pound per cubic foot. Travertine, with a density of 2,200 kg per cubic meter, 140 pound slash cubic foot, was utilized for the foundation. So that's it. Do you believe that the Romans had a superior understanding of concrete technology? How do you think their methods could be applied in our modern world? Leave your comments below. Stay safe.